Hey everyone, this is Derek with Reef Automation, and this is another Neptune Systems Apex programming tutorial. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to do a little bit more advanced setup and advanced programming. So if you haven't watched my other videos on more basics and profiles and so forth, virtual outlets, I would highly recommend that you watch those videos first before going forward. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to create specific profiles to turn off and on. Now, I use this primarily for my reef picture, my office picture. And what this does is, as you can see, I have a reef pick and I have an office pick. And what this does is it allows me to turn on and off a specific scene that looks the best during a picture. And in order to do this, you first have to set up a profile. So we're going to go to profiles and you notice I have a light low, a light pick and a light stream. So if you have a radion, you would click on radion. And since I have a sky, I'm going to click on sky. Now you can essentially do this with any lights that allow you to program the intensities as you can see on the right. Now, what I'll then do is I'll program my specific colors for that particular scene. So for example, if I want to have more of a lower temperature of my lights, uh, let's say 5,000 instead of uh, 10,000 or 20,000, which is more blue, you'll notice that I increased the whites and I've reduced the green, violet, and blue. And then of course I have an overall intensity, which again, you can set to what you want that intensity to be. Uh, the ramp time doesn't need to be anything, but you could ramp it if you wanted to. I don't really see a reason to do so. So once you've got your light pick, selected here, you'll go back and you're going to create a virtual outlet. My virtual outlet I have is reef pick and office pick. Those are my virtual outlets. I'll click on those. And as you can see, nothing happens. I have set off for them. And the reason I have this is because the virtual outlet is actually going to turn on and off and I'm not going to actually program the virtual outlet to do simulate or program to do anything. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go to my skylight and I'm going to go into the configuration here. And if my output reef pick, meaning if my virtual outlet is on, then I want you to change the light schedule to the profile. So what that's going to do is when the light is turned on via the virtual outlet, it's going to set it to that profile. And when it's off, it's going to run the normal schedule, as you can see. So that's a really easy way to make a virtual outlet control a profile. You can make that do it with lights. You can also make that do it with dosing, for example. And we'll go to Reef Amino. We'll come in here. And what I can do is I can say if my output Reef let's just say pick equals on, then I can have it dose something. I can say my ATO dose, and then it will switch the profile to the specific dose based on my virtual outlet. So it's very powerful. It's something that I use for essentially programming a specific device to go to something uh, when I turn it on. So that's how you use profiles and virtual outlets together. Okay, so my next one is going to be very similar to the first one, but a little bit different, and that is the reef maintenance. So again, this is a virtual outlet. It's called reef maintenance. I also have a fish maintenance, and I also have an office maintenance as well, but I don't use the office maintenance as, as much because um, it's only a couple things. But anyway, you go into the virtual outlet, and again, it's basically off except when I push a button. So I have a button that allows me to turn on the maintenance mode whenever I want it to be on. Otherwise, it's always off. So when I turn it on, I want this to do a number of things. So for example, when I hit reef maintenance on, let's just say I want my pump to turn off. So I'm going to come down to my pump. I'm going to look at the programming on my pump here. And you will notice when reef maintenance is on, I want you to turn off this pump. So essentially I'm making a virtual outlet control a feed mode or any type of mode that you want to automatically turn something off. And again, 
In order to utilize this, you're going to have to go to every device. So for example, my skimmer, let's say when I have my maintenance on, I want the output to turn off the skimmer. And that's what I have right there. So that's my reef maintenance mode. And again, it's a virtual outlet that is not programmed to do anything, but when it's turned on or off, it's going to do something to the rest of my outlets. And that's what the reef maintenance does. Now, what's nice about this is you can also go into your email and you can say when reef maintenance is on or fish maintenance is on, I don't wanna get alerts. So I can actually do it right here where I'm not gonna get alerts if my office maintenance or my fish maintenance or my reef maintenance is on. And it's really nice because then when I'm doing maintenance, I'm not gonna get a bunch of alerts and alarms. And that's what those are for. So this is a really interesting and cool way to use virtual outlets. So it's really cool because you can basically make a maintenance mode, turn off and on whatever you want when this is enabled or disabled. And as you can see, I have it tied to a button. Now you can also use this for feed modes. So if I go into here and I go to my reef feed mode and it's in here, reef feed, it's again a virtual outlet. And what it's going to do is it's going to turn on when I push a button and then it's gonna turn off after 15 minutes. So after 15 minutes, it's automatically gonna turn off once I've turned that, push that button because it's set for closed when you push the button, but when the button is open, it goes back to off. Now, again, we can go into my pumps, and this is essentially a custom feed mode. I can come into my pump, and I can have it do this. So if the reef feed mode is on, then I want you to set my pump to 40%. So essentially, you're making your own feed mode via the virtual outlet instead of using the A, B, C, and D as you normally do. So that's another really neat thing that I use in order to associate feed modes with buttons. So the next thing we're gonna discuss is custom emails. Now, this is gonna get a little bit confusing, so I'm gonna to try to do it as slowly as I can, but I decided that I'm gonna make a virtual outlet for just about all of my alerts. Now you'll see I have if output reflow, if output reef high, if I'll put fish low, and I have a number of these, if leak fish, if leak reef. And what I do is these are all different errors, let's say, or different alarms. And I can associate the timing on them. I can also associate what's inside them. So for example, let's say I have a leak reef and leak reef, that output is on. That means that I have a leak somewhere in my reef tank. Now, if I go to the outlet itself, and again, it's a virtual outlet, go to leak reef, you will see that I have all of my leak sensors in there. So instead of listing all of them, I have listed them into one. And what's also nice is it has its own defer. So that means that that alarm is not gonna go off until 10 seconds later. So I can have different virtual outlets for different things in order to defer the timing. That way I can get emails dependent on if that leak is actually on for more than 10 seconds. Now let's go back and we'll take a look at that again with the email and we'll look at something else. So for example, I have a reef high. Now, instead of me having to put a sensor in my reef tank and if it's high, I wanna get alerted right away, you'll see I have a 30 second delay, which means it's gonna delay anything in here, but Let's say I don't want to get it after 30 seconds, I wanna get it a little bit longer than that. So I can go into my Reef High outlet, and again, it's a virtual outlet, and we'll go to Reef High, and you'll see I have a number of things in here, and it's gonna defer it an extra 30 seconds. So it's going to actually defer the Reef High a minute total because it's gonna defer the alert itself, and I've also been able to disable it based on different things. So if you know, my maintenance is on, if my pump is off, for example, it's going to disable this particular alert and only this particular alert. So what's nice about that is I can have different alerts at different times. So, you know, with, with one thing with Neptune, 
is you can't get multiple alerts at the same time. So what is nice about this is I can have a different amount of alerts and I can set them to different timing. So let's say I set this a 32 or 33 or 31 and I set something else to 30, I'm gonna get all of the alerts because they're not going at the exact same time. And this is another way to get multiple alerts. And again, this is just using a virtual outlet to simulate that particular error. So if I go back to my email, you can see I have a number of them. I have Reef Trident, I have Reef Amino. And what these are is instead of getting alerts for when my skimmer is full, I can actually delay it a specific amount of time. And I can also disable it depending on if the skimmer is on or not. Now the Reef Trident's a really cool one. So I don't want to get alerts when my Trident, for example, has low reagent, and I don't want to get those alerts constantly all day long. So what I've done is I've created this outlet called Reef Trident, and it's going to only turn on when Reef Trident, that virtual outlet, is on. So I'm going to come back over to Reef Trident, and I'll take a look at my Reef Trident outlet. And you can see that I only have it when the air trident comes on between specific times of the day. So I'm only going to get that alert at certain points of the day, which is really nice because then I'm not going to get constant alerts over and over and over again. Now we'll go back and I'll show you another thing that I'm doing with this. If I go to my email and you'll see I have if output flow. Now, for example, let's say one of my flow sensors gets out of whack. I can actually come in here and I can disable the flow sensor output and then I won't get alerts for it. So all of these I can disable. For example, my reef roller. Let's say I don't want to get an alert when my reef roller, which has an uh, optical sensor attached to it, has water and I'm not going to want alerts all day long. I can just turn it off right here and now I'm not going to get alerts for my reef roll. So what's nice about doing this is you can have different alerts for different things and you can disable them and enable them. And that's the reason why I do this. So again, if it's a little confusing for you, go back in the video and see what I'm doing and you'll find it to be a lot easier than getting multitudes of alerts all day. And again, this is a more advanced setting uh, and it takes a lot of time as you gotta make virtual out outlets for every single alert. Okay, so the last thing I wanna show you, which I've shown in another video with calcium reactors is the ability in which to use dosing schedules for calcium reactors. Now what this is is a dose and as you can see when output TD which is daytime is on and that again is a virtual outlet it will then set my dose to a specific amount. So reef calcium re reactor day and if it's nighttime it'll set it to night. It also will turn it off if my alkalinity gets higher than what I want and it will also turn off if my pH gets too low. So if I go back to my virtual outlets and I go to Reef Calcium Reactor Daytime, you will see that I have it as an OSC during a specific time of day. So it's gonna dose every two minutes essentially is what this means. It's only gonna do it between 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. Otherwise, it's going to go to the nighttime schedule. Now when it does the nighttime schedule, if I go back here and I go to my profiles because it's a dose profile and I go down to my daytime, you will see I have it running at 100 milliliters at a speed of 125 milliliters a minute. Now during the nighttime, of course, there's less consumption, so I have it only dosing 25 milliliters. And again, it bases it off of that oscillation that I've set inside the daytime and nighttime virtual outlet. So this one I've already done a video on in detail, so I will post a link in the description below if you want to take a look at it. Otherwise, I appreciate you taking a look at this advanced Neptune video, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will try to get to them. Again, these are more advanced, so it might take you a little time and a couple of rewinds to really understand how this all works. But hopefully you learned something and hopefully you liked this video. And if you did, hit the thumbs up. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.